I was conscripted into the Eritrean army and went to war with Ethiopia with only 19 days training. The next year I became a Christian and I was becoming a new man. But I had only been a Christian for two days when the army put me in prison. They shackled my hands and legs and left me out under the desert sun. My hands were tied to my legs with a rope for five days. Five days in the intense desert heat. The heat of the sun actually burnt the skin off my head. In 2002, Eritrea's military government brought in a ban on several church denominations and other faith groups. While certain long-established Christian groups were moderately restricted, others were plunged into severe persecution. Angel Islington in central London, home to a diverse multicultural population and also Eritrea's national embassy in the UK. We wanted to find out what local people knew about Eritrea. Uh, have you heard of Eritrea? Yep. Eritrea, yes, I have. It's, um, it's south of Sudan, is it not? Yes. You have? Yes. OK, wonderful. Have you heard of Eritrea, the country? It? Eritrea? Yeah, I have. Well, have you guys yeah. heard of Eritrea? Yeah. yeah. Wonderful. It's a country in Africa. Okay. OK, so there's a country called Eritrea. Yeah, 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 in Africa. You've heard of it? Yeah, in North Africa. Oh, oh no. You haven't heard of Eritrea? No. Okay, not a problem. Um, do you know which country it split from in the 1990s? Oh, I don't know. Um, Sudan, Ethiopia. I haven't a clue. Okay. Ethiopia? No, no. Haven't a clue. Which country? Go on, have a guess. Um, Ethiopia? Uh, Ethiopia. Okay. Is that correct? That is correct. Eritrea fought a decades-long struggle for independence against Ethiopia, which came to a head in the 1990s. This long period of conflict ultimately led to the rise of the Eritrean military. They were in a prime position to govern the newly independent Eritrean state. But their rule since then has been far from just. But right on their doorstep, just metres away from the Eritrean embassy, where CSW stages protests every May, did the locals of Angel know where it was? Um, did you know that the Eritrean embassy is around the corner? Do you know what? I have walked past it. It's just on the next street. It no. certainly is. Uh, did you know the Eritrean embassy was around the corner? To here? No, I didn't know that. No. Oh, okay. I didn't know there were any embassies around here. There is, yep. Yeah, it's literally on the next street. You know, I knew there was an embassy there, but I don't know which country it was for. Right, okay, yeah. Well, it's literally just on White Lion Street, just on the next road. Uh, did you know the Eritrean embassy is actually around the corner from here? So the National Embassy. Yeah, it's uh, literally just on, just on that street there, White Lion Street. So you, you may well have walked past it at some point. While the residents of Angel might know some basic facts about Eritrea, very few of them knew the extent of suffering instigated by Eritrea's military regime. At any given time, there are up to 3,000 Christians in Eritrean prisons. And these are just the Christians. There are thousands of others languishing in remote desert prisons. I used to be the senior leader of an evangelical church in Eritrea's capital, Asmara. My church was growing fast and lots of young people were coming. We had about 20,000 youth within three years. I made some statements against the military conscription policy of our government. You can't really say anything critical of the government in Eritrea. So that made me quite unpopular with them. They came to arrest me, but the first time I wasn't there. But then I was arrested on my way to a coastal city in May 2004. The surreal thing was, they escorted me like a government official. Twelve armed men were in front of me and twelve behind me in a pickup truck. They put me in prison without charge or trial. We used to eat black tea and bread for breakfast. Lunch was a spoonful of lentils in water shared between eight prisoners. Saturdays were really special because spinach was blended into the usual lentil mix. On Sundays we were given 
the hard, inedible meat from animal intestines. As disgusting as that sounds, we chose to eat it simply for the protein. Obviously, they tortured me. That's fairly standard in Eritrean prisons. They regularly beat my bladder, my kidneys, and my chest. It's a tactic they use to cause the most internal damage. A kind of invisible torture, really. Extremely painful. Then another priest who was in prison with me managed to escape. But when the details of it got out onto the internet, the guards punished me because they thought somehow I leaked it. It didn't matter to them that I hadn't. So they confiscated all my medication for two years. They took my clothes, they restricted what I could eat. I was totally isolated from everybody. Up until then, I had been smuggling letters out of the prison to encourage churches. I was still concerned for them. Prison couldn't really take that out of me. But someone inside told the guards about my letters. So they beat me severely and put me in solitary confinement for three months. In chains. The pain got so bad in my kidneys, <clears throat> one of them had to be removed. The prison doctor thought I had about three days left to live, so they released me to the home of my friend <clears throat> on a stretcher bed with a canister of oxygen. They expected me to die. But I thought it was a miracle to be on the outside of the prison. For years they had threatened to kill me, but finally I was on the outside. I thank God that my wife had meanwhile managed to escape the country with our daughters. And I have been reunited with my family. But in prison, I felt the prayers. I couldn't even tell you my story until now because I wasn't completely safe from the Eritrean authorities. With the help of some good friends and of CSW, I was able to get out. I used to be the senior leader of an evangelical church in Eritrea's capital, Asmara. Actually, it wasn't me. It was this man. His name is Pastor Tesfasayan Hargos. There are over 2,000 Christians imprisoned in Eritrea as we speak, and tens of thousands of others. Now that you know a little more about what happens to them, the first thing you can do is share this film. Many more people need to know about their situation. Awareness will inspire greater action on their behalf. We're already speaking up for imprisoned Eritreans at the United Nations and with government officials. Now it's your chance to give them a voice. Get involved in the campaign today and hear more true stories at www.csw.org.uk forward slash cry freedom. Thanks for watching.